Right, oh, so I'm gonna try something a little different for this video just because, well, I kind of feel like it and I really want to expand. And besides, I don't really have much on my schedule. So yeah, this kind of opens up new possibilities for me in terms of how I want to expand my content. Anyways, this video, we're gonna be looking at Paleo Edits. More specifically, the comment section of one of his most recent community posts. You know, I think I should probably read it for context. Since I want to make this end Permian from Space video or whatever it's called, complete completely original. It obviously won't include any snapshots of wildlife because I'm not going to attempt to model and animate all that jazz. The earth will have formed another supercontinent by the time I finish that, but to get some sense of the players at the time, I thought maybe doing some simple pop-up graphics could be cool. If you have a lesser known late Permian creature you'd like featured in this way, please let me know. Alright, I do have some suggestions, but um, before I make up my mind, I'm gonna read the comment section because the comment section of this particular post is interesting. Out of the 22 comments excluding my own, the comments I picked out really stuck with me, and we're gonna be reading those. So we're gonna start with Michaelodon who picked out Archosaurus, Eucambergia, and Megawasia. I mean, great taste, Mikhail, but as far as notoriety goes, yeah, I have to make a few criticisms here. Not that I have a problem with any of these, especially when we're talking about Megawasia Pate Ritchie. Like, believe me, these guys are absolutely fucking awesome. It's just because of Eucambergia being featured in Walking with Monsters. And yes, I am talking about this fucking scene in particular. Yeah, this one fucking scene gave the clade Therosophalia quite a bit of mainstream notoriety. Which which is an absolute fucking bummer in this particular situation alone because it rules out a lot of members of this clade such as Gorinicus, Alurognathus, and Anaphorapsidus, just to name a few. I mean, what can I say? When the general public finds out that a certain clade is venomous, yeah, they'll just go all in. However, there is one animal mentioned that is kind of a silver lining for me. Archosaurus. For once, I can rest easy knowing that I can literally mention Archosaurus or any other Pterosuchid and nobody who doesn't know much about paleontology would have even the slightest idea on what the fuck I'm on about. Yet it does have its drawbacks. Pterosuchids are unique in their own right. They look so much like crocodilians by behavior and niche, yet somehow, just somehow, their snout looks absolutely fucking bizarre. If a paleo toy company decides to make a toy based on a pterosuchid of any kind, I can assure you I will buy it the first chance I get. <laughs> Anyways, I fucking digress. Anyways, back to Mikhail. I mean, what can I say but Archosaurus is definitely a great choice. A lot of dinosaur casuals aren't really too familiar with archosauromorphs from the Permian, let alone the fucking pterosuchids. But yeah, that was Macalodon's proposal. Metaposaurus, Adaphosaurus, and Ariops. Eh, interesting selection intrusion. However, there's just this one discrepancy here. The latest possible occurrence for Adaphosaurus was during the Chysilurian Epoch, literally the early Permian. Bro, I- I- I'm sorry, okay? But sir, I think your epoch's are way off. <laughs> Look, alright, I know I might come off as kind of a condescending cunt for actually laughing at this, but honestly, it really caught me off guard. Oh, and by the way, like a Daphosaurus, Ariops also occurred during the early Permian. And another thing that threw me off is that Metaposaurus occurred during the Norian Age of the Late Triassic. Poor Paleo Edits must be laughing his head off reading that comment. <laughs> If anything, this comment should be a meme right here. And yet even Paleo Edit specified that he wanted lesser known late Permian creatures. Alright, you know what? I'm willing to give Intrusion a benefit of a doubt and just say that he forgot to read that section of the passage. And I'm doing this purely for the sake of Intrusion's self-esteem. Like, fucking hell. Well, I guess next comment then. Okay, interesting proposal from Yarus. He picked out Suminia, Diictodon, Antiosaurus, and Esteminosaurus. Sukis. Right off the bat, somebody who finally gets the memo and picks a pretty basal and obscure amnodont. And I mean, Diictodon is also kind of cool as well. As well as Antiosaurus. 
Even though Astemonosuke is hailed from the mid-Permian, the Guadalupian Epoch, it's still pretty unique in its own right. However, Sumenia is just on another level of bizarre. Which is why it's such a great choice. Another great proposal, this time by Joa Osenura. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Silosaurus, Misosaurus, and Prionosuchus. Okay, this guy has taste. Yeah, Silosaurus is cool. I mean, the Draco lizards actually serve the exact same niche in the Holocene. I could also say the same for Misosaurus. And as cool as Prionosuchus is, it did not actually live in the late Permian. According to recent studies done in the formation Prionosuchus lived in, the Pedro de Fogo formation, we now know that this place was actually dated to the Chai Silurian epoch. So I hate to burst your bubble, but Prionosuchus was technically more of a early Permian Timon Spondyl. Anyways, next comment is going to be a little shorter. Sky Pixel Gamer chose Phrenaxodon. And somebody already beat me to it. Okay, what the fuck even is this username? Hell no, I'm not going to be able to read that without biting my tongue. But yeah, Kant's right. Phrenaxodon likely survived the Great Dying, given that they occurred during the early Triassic. Which, if it's really your proposal, Sky, then I say go for it. And of fucking course, there's this one guy that would pick Inostrancevia. Am I right, Crystals? Gorgonopsids are probably the most well-known late Permian animal. Inostrancevia is no exception. Gigantospondia? Sarcoprion? Devanosaurus? Ha <laughs> fucking now we're talking. Gigantospondia is just one of the many different types of sponges you can find throughout the late Permian. The only difference is that Gigantospondia is definitely the largest among the sponges. I mean, Sarcoprion is pretty cool, but the majority of Eugenia Donta is pretty well known already by the general public. Divinosaurus is cool, it's just that Temino spondles aren't considered obscure anymore. And I guess that leaves us with my choice on what to actually put in that video. If PaleoEdit somehow comes across my channel and watches this video, after careful consideration, I would like to propose Arthrolocosa. You can always count on me to propose the fucking Ceracodistids. And I know what you're probably thinking, that would be a proposal that's more likely to be made by someone like Bugs in Biology. So why of all people did I specifically choose Arthrolocosa as a proposal? Known from the late Carboniferous all the way to the late Permian, Arthrolocusidae is a rather devious taxa within the clade Ceracodistida. There has been kind of a push to place it within Arania under Mesophily. However, we do know that Arthrolocusa is a Ceracodicid due to the presence of tergites on the animal's Ephistostoma, which is a pleasing amorphic trait for arachnids. Mesophily is the only spider which retains this. They also might actually have the potential to glow under UV light. There is a slight possibility I'm not willing to rule out. When it comes to Arthrolocusa walterbicae, Arthrolocusa antiqua, Arthrolocusa danielsi, just to name a few species, yeah, most of them are situated within the Carboniferous. However, there was a paper published in 2005 detailing the existence of Permian spiders. Arthrolocusa was actually found within this formation. However, what substantial evidence we have is that of its carapace. The Belabivo formation of Russia is definitely an interesting place, showing not only the crown group of Arania, but also the more basal Ceracodicids. Ceracodicid fossils, especially during the point in time when the Great Dying occurred, is rare. So when you manage to find them within that specific strata, it's really extraordinary. So yeah, anyways, that's kind of why I chose Arthrolocusa as a proposal. Partly due to the fact that I absolutely adore Ceracodicids, especially the Arania, as well as the fact that non-Arania Ceracodicids are a lot more obscure often being mistaken for the crown group. For example, the pretty small Eurypterid known as Mega Arachne Cervinae was at one point in time mistaken to be one of the largest members of the Ceracodicidae. Anyway, PaleoEdits, if you're watching this, please take my proposal to consideration. Again, I would love to see a pop-up of Arthrolocusa on your edits. You know, as a matter of fact, any Ceracodicid would do. I am fully anticipating to get roasted by bugs in biology for every minute mistake I make in this video.
video. But hey, worth it. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. I gotta fucking go. Righto, so right before I end the video for real, this is honestly genius. This is Paleo Edit's most ambitious project yet, and I'm all for it. So if you guys have any obscure late Permian animal you want to see featured in the video, just let them know. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll just save that particular community post on my community post just for easier access. As for Paleo Edit's, good luck on the video. I'm looking forward to see the final product.